your problem, Helen. Oh, thanks, Mum. What sort of time tomorrow evening? Um, I'll be going out about 6, 6.30ish. Oh, don't worry, I won't be back late. Well, it doesn't make any difference to me and Dad. We're in all evening. No, it's me. I can't do late nights anymore. No. Especially not during the week. Yeah, it's a shame the meal has to be on a Monday. Hmm. Still, if that's the only night your friends from the class can get together... Right, let's put some more salt in. Don't worry. We look after the boys, make sure they go to bed at their normal time. Oh, thanks. Can't have Jack nodding off in nursery the next morning. Oh, won't it be lovely when we can start using the Monty's milk for pour such a blue? Oh, yes. Can't wait for them to carve. Did you see Johnny going through them again this morning? Yeah. <laughs> He's spending half his life in the shed. He's like a new dad. He can't think about anything else. Oh, well, I can understand why. Some were quite unsettled when they first arrived. It was a long trek to get here. Well, he says they've calmed down now, most of them. I was watching him earlier. He's so good with them. Will you tell him that, Helen? Oh, OK. Yeah, it'll give him a lift. He's still not very confident about being in charge of the herd. He's a natural. Yes, well, everyone sees that, except Johnny himself. Well, in that case, I'll tell him he's doing a great job. Thank you. Oh, you are popular. Must be the third message since we've been in here. Oh, where did I put it? Uh, here we are. Oh, it's from Lee. Oh, I'm not sure it'll keep. We may as well take a look while I run the way off. OK. Is he going to the meal tomorrow night? Afternoon, Brian. You're looking for Ruth? No, no. No, I wanted to ask if the NFU meeting's this Thursday. What, the Brexit update? Yeah, I thought I'd better drag myself along. Yes, it's 7.30. Thanks, David. Though whether the speaker has any more idea what's really going to happen than anyone else... Well, who does? At this stage, you just need to buckle down and get on with it. Yes. Um, was this the fabled ration with added donuts? <laughs> yeah, Josh's bakery wastes in there somewhere. And he's loaning us the mixer wagon. I haven't spoken to one dairy farm around here who isn't struggling for silage. No. Was it just about the meeting, Brian? Um, you could have found the details on the website. No, I was having a walk anyway. As it doesn't take long to feel cooped up in Willow Cottage. Oh. I wanted to give Jenny some space. I thought there was no harm calling in if I'm not holding you up. No, 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 no. Ruth said you've all got a lot to mull over. Oh. Well, the partnership meeting did get it rather bloody last week. hope she wasn't too upset by it. Well, she wasn't exactly singing for joy when she came home. Huh? No, she told you what happened. Well, I... I know there are confidentiality issues. No, it's all right, it's all right. I accept this goes way beyond the usual circumstances. She said you were going to plead not guilty at the magistrate's court. That's right. Although, after everyone else's reaction on Friday, she thought you'd probably change your mind very quickly. Oh, did she? Ah. Oh, afternoon, Linda. I was hoping to catch you before I finish. Oh, lucky you. I'm only just starting. Oh, you're on a double up, aren't you? Yeah. Late shift today, early tomorrow. Well, I envy you your stamina, Roy. Now, there I'll was probably something stay I... over. It's hardly worth going home tonight. No. And I've got off to the worst possible start. Oh, yes. Cathy said we're getting behind hand with the lost oh. property. You don't fancy staying on to help sort through it, do you? Uh, not really. Now, Roy, it's to do with reception. Oh, look at this. I... It gets worse each time. Oh. Who checks out of a hotel and forgets a cactus? Why bring it in in the first place? Oh, beats me. Well... Not sure it's a true cactus. Mm, more of an aloe vera. <laughs> it's not as though they just bought it. Pot's chipped, looks ancient. Yes. Oh, then there's all the false teeth. Oh, you could have nightmares oh, about this. Yeah, Roy, I was hoping to discuss staffing reception when Ginny's off. When's her appointment? Well, that's not the problem. We're covered for Friday. Oh, I thought so. It's whether there are any follow-ups at short notice. Well, she said that's likely. Let's hope not. But we're so stretched at the desk already. Yeah, we are, aren't we? So, Cathy has asked if we could come up with a contingency plan. OK. And once that's resolved, then... <sighs> this is no good. There is another matter I'm hoping you might clear up for me, Roy. Yeah, what's that? Well, I couldn't help overhearing something in the shop this morning. Hilary Noakes has such a penetrating voice. I simply can't believe it's true. 
We're almost there with the curd. Oh, good. So, is it about the meal tomorrow? Yeah. Lee's going as well? Mum. Sorry. I don't understand why you're bothered. It's only you seem to be texting each other quite a lot. Well, you don't say anything when I message Kirsty or Bemma. I know. Or some of the mums at nursery in Loxley Barrett. That's different. Why? <laughs> Sometimes Lee and I message each other, so what? Have you been in touch quite a lot lately? <sighs> Lee likes a friendly moan about his daughters occasionally and I tell him if something funny has happened with Henry and Jack. That's what single parents do. Oh, well, if that's all it is. Right, I'll get the moulds. Nothing more serious than that. No, it isn't. What does it matter anyway? I'm not criticising him. He seems a perfectly nice chap. Yep, he is. He was lovely at Henry's party. It's like that with everyone. Even if he doesn't have a particularly wide range of interests. I'm sorry. At least that's the impression I get. He's mainly talked to me about martial arts and stuffed crust pizza. <sighs> what do you expect, Mum? A discussion of radical feminism over the quinoa porridge recipes? No. But I'm not sure I've ever seen him out of his tracksuit. Well, he's very sporty. All I'm thinking, Helen, if you were to meet someone new... Mum, I... you're reading far too much into this. I, 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 I'd feel happier if it was someone who's more on your wavelength. Oh, right. You mean like last time? Six altogether. Six steers? Yeah. Hopefully we'll be bringing the trailer home empty from market. Oh, good luck. Don't know what price we'll get, but moving a few on should ease the feed problem, Sonny. Yep, Kenton said you'd been feeling the pinch. <laughs> yeah, as discreet as ever. What, well, I had lunch at the bull. He came over when he saw I was on my own. Oh. It was that or starve. <sighs> Things are that bad with Jennifer. Oh, yes. You should have rung and come to us. I don't need charity, David. No, we'd have enjoyed the company. <sighs> we had hoped Elizabeth would join us for lunch, but... Well, she was too busy, but... Anyway, it would have been useful for Ruth to see how your thinking has developed since Friday. I told you, it hasn't changed one jot. I hadn't realised till then that you were even thinking of pleading not guilty. Ah, I've been mulling it over for a while. Did your solicitor suggest it? Oh, no, no, Harriet's advised against. Then why on earth are you doing it? I haven't made my decision lightly, David. Well, I'm sure you haven't, but... Look, apart from anything else, you must see the awful spot it puts Ruth in. Well, it doesn't have to. Brian, if it goes to trial and she's called to give evidence, what is she supposed to say? Whatever she wants. You're forcing her to become a hostile I'm witness. I'm not forcing her to do anything. Well, she's not going to lie under oath. I don't want her to. Those are her only choices. Look, she can say whatever she likes. But what Ruth doesn't appear to understand, or Jenny, is this isn't about legal procedure. I'm pleading not guilty because I want my day in court. I've never given in to bullying before, and I'm not about to start with the environment agency. It's hardly bullying. They're trying to disgrace me. Brian, pleading not guilty amounts to saying you didn't know low mead was contaminated. That's absurd. I'm doing it to protect my name, David. To show all the gossip mongers I won't be cowed. Can't you see how vindictive the EA is being? Well, no, quite frankly. I'm not trying to wriggle out of my responsibilities. Yes, I made a bad judgment letting TCE onto the farm. But I've paid for every last drop of contamination to be cleaned up. It's cost me my home. I know. Isn't that enough for them? Oh, no, no. no they don't care how much standing I've lost in the community or about my financial security. I've still got to go to court and be made an example of and pay a whacking great fine. I, I suppose it's what about What kind precedent. of retirement i be able to give Jenny then? Send her out with a begging bowl? It's not going to come to that. David, it doesn't matter how much I do to put things right in low mead. The EA won't be happy until I humiliate myself by groveling in front of them. Well, I've put up with an awful lot already, but I've finally had enough. And I'm sorry if I'm making life difficult for Ruth. But what the EA needs to understand, and everyone else too, the more they try to intimidate me, the harder I'm going to fight back. <clears throat> Very well, then. I'll ask Katerina if she's prepared to be flexible about her days off. Well, tell her it may not come to that. Only if we need extra cover for Ginny. Naturally. 
And uh, you're happy to take the poncho to the clothes bank? It may as well do someone some good, even if it's only I'm picking the wall. Yeah. Thanks. Right then. Enjoy your evening. I must say, Roy, I am surprised by your response. I hadn't realised Lexi is of no interest to you anymore. I wish her well, but that's about it. I see. I don't get why everyone keeps asking me about her. You know, after working alongside you for so long, I thought I knew you rather well, Roy. It seems I've misjudged you completely. Hey? I've always considered you an exemplary father up to now. What? You take your responsibilities with Phoebe and Abby so seriously. <laughs> of course I do. And yet how easily you're turning your back on poor Lexi. Well, what's she got to do with Phoebe and Abby? Oh. You don't mean... Uh, she's not pregnant, is she? Well, yes. Blimey. You didn't know? No! Everyone in the shop did. It's the first I've heard of it. Oh, well, that explains the prickly response. So, I am the bearer of what I hope is welcome news. <sighs> You're to be a father again, Roy. No, I'm not. You are. According to Hilary Noakes, she's definitely pregnant. Well, she probably is, but it's nothing to do with me. Oh. It's... It's much more complicated than that. Well, Hilary was convinced it was the reason you'd broken up. No! She said you'd probably feel too old for more children. Oh, that's nice of her. I'm so relieved. I argued it would be most unlike you to leave Lexi in the lurch. But I'm afraid Pat Fletcher and one or two others sided with Hilary. What? Uh, everyone's saying I got Lexi pregnant and then dumped her? I'm afraid so. Oh, marvellous. I did my very best to convince them it wasn't true, Roy. Oh, well, thanks for trying, Linda, but if that's what's being said, your opinion doesn't count for much, does it? It's Lexi who needs to be put in the record straight. What are you looking for? I'm just saying we're not short of anything, Adam. Lubricant. Gloves. This early? Yes. We won't have any lambs for a month. Well, why not check now that the user in? Eli's got it in hand. Oh, well, does he know we're out of bulbs for the heat lambs? Oh, I'm sure he does. I can pick some up later in the week. Brian, what's the point of hiring a shepherd if you do all the work yourself? Oh, so I'm not allowed to take an interest in my own farm now? I'm not saying that. It just strikes me. You may have more important things to think about than lambing gloves and heat bulbs. OK, Helen, I give in. They're beauties. You're only saying that to shut me up. No, I'm not. Take a proper look. Now, look. Isn't that a terrific top line? Grit. Deep, rump, nice, heavy carcass. But if I say I like them being red and white, does that make me sound shallow? You are shallow, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I promise. If I'm only allowed one type of cow in my desert island, it'll be the Montbelliard. Well, we're going to make such good cheese once they're milking. See, that's the way to get me interested. Talk about the product. Well, you have to come and see them soon. I will. <laughs> Just to stop you going on about what them. If you think I'm bad, wait till you hear Johnny. He's living and breathing the new herd. Good lad. If I'd known it was your day off, I'd have said, call in this afternoon. Yeah, some day off. It would have saved me having to drop off your cookbook. Well, you could have dropped that back any time. Oh, did you try the potato pancakes? Yeah. And? Well, Henry liked them. Jack wasn't so keen. Oh, you did use the scallions? Yeah, that's what he didn't like. Oh, yeah, maybe he's a bit young. Funnily enough, that's what I'm cooking tonight. It's one of Adam's favourites. I bet you make them better than I do. <laughs> That's just a knack. Not letting too much oil in, and I want to cheer him up. It's heavy going at home farm just now. Oh. Especially with Brian's hair and hanging over everyone. Oh. Look, I can't go into the ends and outs of it, but things are getting pretty intense there. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's why I was planning on making things nice here, tidy up, you know, put on a good meal so Adam can relax, but... I mean, I've not had five minutes to myself all day. Oh, sorry. No, 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 don't be silly. You're the best thing that's happened. I mean, I was bursting to tell you anyway, so when you turned up... Oh, it's fantastic news. <laughs> isn't it? Otherwise, it's, it's just been firefighting all day. How? Well, I barely still panics when I'm not in the kitchen. I've had calls from Grey Gables about a dodgy fryer and the dry store, <laughs> everything. 
Even says Roy was in looking for me one time in a foul mood. Roy? Yeah, it'll be about a grouchy customer on Saturday. She threatened she was going to complain. Oh, but hey, that still doesn't excuse me not offering you a cup of tea oh, yet. Oh, no, no, thanks. What, coffee? No, I was serious, Ian. Can't stay, but uh, you will give Lexi my congratulations. Of course. And keep some for yourself and Adam. Thanks, but hey, hey, remember, it's so early. That Don't I... worry, I won't tell us all. You're the exception. I couldn't keep it from you. Such wonderful news. <laughs> I'm made up about it. <sighs> right, now I must hurry home and get changed. Have somewhere nice? Just for a meal with a friend. Oh, yeah? Anyone special? I don't know. Yet. I assume she's put you up to this. Who? Your mother. She hasn't put me up to anything. No? It's what I think, Brian. You're making an incredibly stupid mistake. By standing up for myself? (laughs) Is that what you think you're doing? Yes. At everyone else's expense? I'm doing it for the benefit of the whole family. If Alice can see that, why can't you? (laughs) Alice would back you on anything. What about the effect on Mum? She's being completely unreasonable. She doesn't want to be married to a perjurer. It's the only way I can have my say. (laughs) Would you break up the marriage for that? Well, that's what she's threatening to do, not me. Because you won't listen to common sense. I'm the one being sensible. What? She's spending all her time in little cabals with Peggy and Lillian. And you, I assume... If you mean, am I trying to support her while you're acting like a bloody fool again, then yes. Well, I'm sorry, but this conspiracy of the meek isn't going to work. It's not a conspiracy. I admit my chances of getting off are pretty slim. Though there's always a chance. Only in your dreams. But your mother didn't marry a coward. I'd far rather go down fighting than let her think she's stuck with one now. Will we be all right there, Lee? Yeah, you part where I usually do. Oh, okay. Thanks again for picking me up, Helen. No trouble. I'd have been quite happy coming to the farm, collecting you instead. Oh, this seemed easier. (laughs) Maybe another time? (laughs) Well, at least this way. You can have a drink. Well, there's that. No, I won't have anything. I've got the boys to get up in the morning and work. Yeah, I always go steady myself during the week. (laughs) Here we are. Ah, Mr Wen's kitchen. (laughs) Nice dragon. Great food. After you. You've booked, haven't you? Very busy. It's always busy, even on Mondays. So, yes, we've got a reservation. Oh, gosh. What? I'm completely overdressed, aren't I? No. Well, it feels like it. Give me your coat. They hang up here. I wasn't sure what sort of place to expect. Oh, I'm not complaining. You look fantastic. Oh, thanks, but um, not too OTT. Nah, you got all sorts at Mr Wen's. <laughs> Ta. No one bats an eyelid. Oh, well... Though, for future reference, if there is a future... Yes? Remember, I've seen you puffing and panting while doing (laughs) squat thrusts. It didn't stop me asking you out, did it? (laughs) But if he doesn't like you telling it the way it is... No, he doesn't. But why is he spending so much time at the farm? (sighs) You can imagine what it's like at Willow Cottage. Your mum's still in meltdown? With Brian? Yes. It wouldn't surprise me if she walked out on him any day. That'd wake him up. (laughs) I'm not so sure. But can he not see what he's doing to her? I don't think he's given a thought to anyone except himself. (laughs) Uh, are you expecting someone? No. I'll get it! Oh, thanks, Lexi. He's being typical Brian. One idea fixed in his head. No one else matters. Roy! Hi, yeah, come in. Why haven't you got back to me? I've been ringing all day. I've left loads of messages. Uh, sorry, my battery's You've dead. made a real fool of me, haven't you, Lexi? What? I thought, OK, we're finished, but after all we've been through, don't I deserve better? Is this about Mrs Hutchins, Roy? What? Mrs Hutchins? Yeah, the woman who didn't like her cream tea on Saturday. She was given strawberry instead of blackcurrant jam. It's nothing to do with cream teas! OK, sorry. I thought you wanted to see me. I'll leave you to it. No, no, I want you to wear this as well. Can I close the door, Roy? All right. Come on, come in. We don't want the neighbours listening. (laughs) Won't be anything they haven't heard already. Old place has. What? Why did you do it? Tell everyone else about the baby, not a peep to me. People know I'm pregnant? Yes! Oh, my. How? What's going on? Oh, you tell me, Adam. Who knows I'm pregnant? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? Everyone! I haven't told anyone. 
I have only told Mum, and she'll have kept it quiet. Yeah, well, I mean, don't look at me. I know Helen wouldn't blab. Well, someone said something, because it's right round the village. No, it can't be. Do you want to know the best part? Why? Turns out I'm the father. Oh, no. Yeah, and then I walked out on you, because I don't want it. <laughs> I've done everything I can think of. I still can't get them completely clean. <laughs> I can't believe I was such an idiot with brand new trainers for a muddy walk through the woods. You did enjoy it. <laughs> you know I did, Helen. It was great. And it took two days for my feet to defrost. <laughs> mm. Mm. Good? Every time, I tell myself, try something new, Lee. I just could never resist crispy duck. It looks really tasty. <laughs> oh. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's fine. I can't believe I just burped. <laughs> really doesn't matter, Helen. Is everyone looking at me? No. Honestly? <laughs> no one's looking at you, Helen, except me, and I don't mind. Oh, must have been the spring onion. <laughs> Radishes usually set me off. How embarrassing! <laughs> I don't know why you're fussing. That wouldn't make it into my top ten of bad moments on a date. Really? I still wake up sweating at some of them. No, you're just being <laughs> polite. No, I'm not. I promise. Like when my first serious girlfriend took me home to meet her parents. Yeah, what happened? <laughs> well, I was getting over a stomach bug. I was feeling a bit rumbly, you know? <laughs> But I didn't cry off, and it went okay until, just before we were going to leave, her dad started on about his model trains, <laughs> and while he droned on, I was swelling up with wind. <gasps> I thought I'd get away with it, but when I finally stood up, it all just came out in one long squeak. <laughs> I sounded like an elf practising the trombone. <laughs> it set the dog off howling. Well, that, that is embarrassing. <laughs> I nearly died. Dawn never invited oh, me back. At least I wasn't that bad. <laughs> That kind of thing doesn't bother me in the slightest. Yeah, you soon learn in physio, everyone's built the same way. There's no sense pretending different. Well, some people feel much more comfortable pretending. I've never seen the point. Yeah, we're all just trying to do the same thing, aren't we? Hmm? Meet someone nice to get along with. Have a laugh together. Yeah, well, maybe I should have checked before I started having a go. <laughs> no, I completely understand. I assumed it was one of you three. Look, I'd have done the same. I don't know how the news got out, Roy. It's not right. So many horrible things being said about you. No, it isn't. You are such a good man. <laughs> Wish a few more people thought the same. Some of the looks I've been getting. Yeah. It was wrong of me not to tell you sooner. You are still my friend. Hmm. Yeah. Look, uh, thanks for inviting me in, uh, at least I've got it off me chest. We really are sorry, Roy. Genuinely. I'll make a move. I I'll come to the door. No, it's all right. I'll let myself out. I am so sorry. I never thought this is how it would be between us. Yeah. Night. Goodbye. See you, Roy. Yeah, see you. The poor man. What a nightmare for him. <sighs> what are we going to do about it? No, we can't let everyone go on saying such unkind things. Well, I can only see one way to stop it. Me too. Uh, oh, I wanted so much to keep it quiet, but I'm carrying your baby until I went home. I know. It's too soon to speak about it. Anything could happen. Yeah. And I don't like people looking at me, talking about me. It's not their business. Well, that's human nature. We're not going to change that. No. And it is important to protect Roy. We must let everyone know he is a good man. He is not walking away from his child. So, we tell them you're carrying our baby? Alexi? Yes. Ian? I don't like it any more than Lexi. Having our private lives chewed over in the bull and everywhere else, but... There's nothing else we can do. I agree. We can't just think of ourselves. If poor Roy's getting it in the neck. Hey-ho. Now let's get the truth out there. Embrace ourselves for a tidal wave of clacking tongues. Can I get you anything else? Mm, better not. I've still plenty to get through this afternoon. 
a tuna sandwich isn't much of a lunch for a working man. I don't want to start piling the pounds on now the half marathon's been and gone. <laughs> don't be ridiculous, Alistair. You're in great shape. Oh, I don't think Doug Lovell agrees with you. Doug? Oh, chap buying you out. One of the partners. Had a long talk with him this morning about my future role with Lovell James. You are going to still be working in Ambridge. Yeah, in some capacity. It's just Doug touched on my age once or twice. Oh. Then kept mentioning the exciting new pathways open to me at this stage of my career. <laughs> Such as? Mentoring newly qualified vets who join Lovell James, yeah. training students on placement, perhaps running a farmer's discussion group. Oh, sounds interesting. Yeah, except everything he outlined was centre-based, mostly at their main practice outside Felpersham. Oh, and you're not keen on the commute? I didn't realise they expect me to wind down so quickly, swap my own patch and clients for the comfort of staying indoors. Right, not ready for it. I still enjoy what I do. Then why not keep going? They obviously see me as being a bit long in the tooth. Not really up to all the hard graft. Did you say anything to him? Not much. Ah, I suppose it's inevitable eventually. And if that's the deal... Well, there's worse things than being indoors on a day like this. <laughs> now, how's about a coffee? Uh, well, possibly. Always happy to be dragged away oh, from See work. to these two, then come back to me. OK. Afternoon, Kirsty. Philip. Hi. Afternoon. What can I get you? All right, Team Dobbin. Oh, hi, Alistair. <laughs> Still feeling a little hoarse. Oh, don't remind me. <laughs> I'll have the fish pie if it's on. Are you eating in here or in the restaurant? In here. OK, one fish pie. Philip. I'm just admiring your specials. Mm. Any drinks? Well, I'm driving you there and everywhere this afternoon, so uh, I'd better stick to orange juice. Tap water will be fine for me. OK. Hey, Sabrina almost clipped us coming in. Mm. Why is she wearing designer shades in this weather? Um, I know. She called in to book a meal and share the latest. Hello. What's that? Ian and Adam are having a baby. <sighs> She's spreading that round, is she? Well, calm him down and tell him I'll be straight You knew over. already about Lexi? People shouldn't yeah, be gossiping. It's way too early. Ah, Sabrina could contain okay, herself. Oh, nice table. with it, Philip. Uh, please, what's this about a baby? Oh, I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. I wish he'd keep her mouth shut. Roy was really upset. Uh, I'm going to have to forget that coffee, Jolene. Oh. Uh, bye, all. See you, Alice. Bye. Everyone thought he was the father. Probably Sabrina who started that off. Well, it ain't just her. She got it from Pat Fletcher, who thinks it's all very odd. Oh, wonderful. The garden gnome queen of Ambridge calling someone else odd. Sounds intriguing. You ready to order? Well, I was tempted by the chops, Jolene, ah. but uh, I'm going to plump for the steak and ale pie. Right. One fish pie, one steak and ale. Kenton! Kenton! In a minute. Oh, don't weigh myself. Heaven knows how long my husband's planning on staying upstairs. Sorry about that. No, that's all right. You were saying? Yeah, um, well, I got some idea from your call. I didn't realise it had gone that badly with Elizabeth. Oh, I made a real mess of it. Shula told me you let slip about the sleeping pills. I didn't mean to, Dave. No, of course not. I was only trying to make up for the hash I made of talking about the alcohol licence. No, no. And she was in complete denial. She's not depressed, she's just tired. And when I tried suggesting it was a bit more than that, it only made things worse. Well, at least you had a go, mate. I should never have gone back. I should have left it to you and Shula. Yeah, it's the same for all of us. We're walking on eggshells. It definitely sounds like she needs professional help, but it's got to be her that asks for it. Uh, but how do we get that through to her? Let's have a look, Joe. She was happy as Larry when I took her in this, this morning, and then she starts sweating like this. <coughs> Won't move her leg at all. Whoa, that is sensitive. Yeah, well, hey, it's all right, Jim. He, he don't mean to hurt you. Hey, what is it, veterinary? Hey, what's wrong with her? Sorry to have borrowed him for so long, Jolene. I can see you're busy. We're quietening down now. Well, I'd have come down if it had got any worse. Don't worry. Wayne and I managed. I just popped into the restaurant. Thought I might see Mum in there. Oh? Yeah, she said she was going for lunch with Carol. No, yeah, there's been no sign of either of them. Oh, well, she must have changed her mind. Well, sorry again, Jolene. Uh, let's stay in close touch, Kenton. Yeah, absolutely. See you, David. Yeah. And if you change your mind about rumours... Um, yeah, thanks, but I'll pass. Bye! 
Rumours? Oh, the first thing he noticed was my new stack of Fleetwood Mac vinyl. Couldn't resist asking how much it will cost. Mm. I take it he'd come about the loan? Well, you mentioned it. But, to be fair, he must have got out of the human side of the bed this morning. We mostly talked about Elizabeth. Oh. Yeah, he's as worried as I am. I just can't see any way to lift her out of this pit. Well, I'm not sorry for him. Well, it always feels awkward eating on your own. Well, then you shouldn't have bitten your head off when you said hello. He wasn't that bad. Oh. Brian and Jennifer are about the most <sighs> aggravating neighbours I've ever had. <laughs> and they still haven't sorted the phone line repair. Well, you've admitted you aren't in a great mood yourself today. Hmm. Well, that's because I've had to do a hatchet job this morning. You didn't actually sack Nadia if she's self-employed. Well, next best thing. Telling her Grey Gables won't use her anymore. Well... If a petition doesn't turn up on time... Oh, I know it had to be done. I went through it all with Cathy before making the call. Oh, there you are, then. I'm sure half of Nadia's problems were finding childcare. Mm. <sighs> That's the trouble with the gig economy. You have to do everything at impossibly short notice. Perhaps she works that way because she values the flexibility. A lot of people do. Mm. I know it doesn't suit everyone. Oh, except the bosses. I accept you prefer the security of a permanent contract. If I was in the right job, I might. Still feeling unsettled? Oh, I know it's really ungrateful of me. Uh, no. But when I started out, I didn't see myself ending up working full-time in the leisure industry. Come on, then. What is it you really want to do? It's a nasty touch of infection in her foot, Joe. I I've released a bit of pus with the hoof knife. Ah, oh, well, poultice will do the rest, Oh, you'll be right as rain in no time, girl. <laughs> Have you got the tape? Uh, yeah, oh, ah, yeah. One more strip should make the poultice stay in place. Yeah, well, she, she's a lot happier already, aren't you, Jim? Yeah. And she's up to date with her vaccinations. No worries about tetanus. Ah, uh, well, you, you made a neat little job of that, and a sure no eat. Uh, so, we'll have another look and a fresh poultice tomorrow. Mm. Yeah, well, you come on a lot as a veterinary in the time I've known you. Oh, thank you. Hmm. One a minute, girl. Hey, yeah. You know, I was saying that to Clary when we was looking at your picture in the paper last week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, good girl, good girl. Yeah. At least you was the front end of the horse, <laughs> eh? <laughs> Best thing about it. <laughs> yeah, no, well, yeah. It's a shame you ain't got no wife to take a pride in you no more. All over now, is it? Yes, um, the decree nice eyes come through. But Shula and I are still friends. Yeah, well, that's more than most of them that's married, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, you'll still be taking care of Jim, though, won't you? Oh, um... Your missus, your, your, your ex-missus... Promised to pay for her care. I'm sure she will, well, Joe. Well, I hope so. It isn't cheap looking after a pony. No, you know. no, though it may not be me coming out to her in future. Eh? I could be spending a lot more time in Felpersham soon. Someone else keeping an eye on Ambridge. Oh, that ain't no good. Jim will never settle to another veterinary. Of course she will. Oh, no, no, she won't. And I ain't sure I will neither, Alistair Lloyd. No, you're not. Oh, you must be biased. I'm simply trusting the evidence of my eyes. You're nowhere near too old. I'm 37. I've missed the boat. Oh, just the opposite. <laughs> you're ready to start a new phase. Oh, I don't know. You've got so much relevant experience. Of sacking people? Of managing a team. Dealing with the public. Handing them towels and locker keys. Running a health club involves an awful lot more than that, Kirsty. Hmm... Then there's your voluntary work with the Wildlife Trust. Everything you know about nature. Well, it's not that much. I thought I knew a thing or two about birds when we met. <laughs> After a couple of walks together, I realised I was a complete novice. <laughs> I didn't bore you, did I? <sighs> you opened my eyes to things I'd never really noticed before. Really? Yeah. I can finally separate willow warblers and chiff chaffs now. <laughs> <laughs> That's something. So I completely agree. You'd be much happier in an environmental job. Except I haven't got the right qualifications to do anything. Do what you said. Apply to retrain. Mm, it's a lovely idea, but... What's stopping you? 
It's such a big step, Philip. And you're brave enough and bold enough to take it. I know you are, Kirsty. <sighs> Look, I wasn't planning on saying anything today, but here's a wild idea that might help you make your mind up. Oh, yeah? What's that? Oh, hello. <laughs> She's leaning in close. <laughs> Stop staring, Kent. Sorry. So what do you think? Honestly? Yes. Well, as far as I can see, the best way to help your sister is to find out what she needs to do to get the licence back. Ooh, selling alcohol won't help if she's still not up to running the business. It'd make life easier for Glenn. But it's Elizabeth that I'm worried about. Well, maybe you need to shift your focus for a while. Well, so I don't do any more damage? Oh, it's not your fault Elizabeth's depressed. Oh, no, but oh, God, I certainly put my foot in it last week. Well, there's probably nothing you could have said that would have helped. Oh, great. So how do any of us get through to her? You know, me, Dave, Shula... Oh. Perhaps she don't find it easy opening up to you lot. Well, why not? We know her better than anyone. Yeah, well, maybe that's it. Hmm? Well, you all grew up together. Had your battles. You know, worked out the pecking order. No, I'm not sure that we ever did that. It's hard to let your guard down then. Saying, I'm not quite the person I always made out. <sighs> maybe. But... If there's someone on the edge of the family where there's no real scars, there's no reason to keep the mask up. You want to talk to her? Well, we've had a couple of customers asking about attractions in the area. We're short on Lower Loxley stuff. I could go across tomorrow. Yeah, I, I wasn't dropping hints, love. I know. I mean, believe me, it won't be much fun. Yeah, I get that. My family can be difficult. Remember Christmas Day? Yeah, well, that was you, giving Russ a hard time. Well, Elizabeth can be really funny. She might not take it the right way. Well, if she doesn't, she doesn't. But with the rest of you drawing a blank, isn't it worth me having a go? For once? I don't really know what he was doing here, David. You weren't buying or selling. no. Weren't in the mood for much of a chat, neither. Well, he's got a lot on his mind right now. Yeah, I reckon so. Though he could have chosen a better day to come to market. You ain't the only one going home disappointed. Yeah, well, at least they sold. Though I definitely didn't get the prices I was hoping for, really. Oh, not many, did. It ain't been a flying trade. To be honest, our steers weren't as well finished as I'd have liked. Oh, they weren't that bad. Well, with being so short on silage, yeah. it's been hard getting the ration right. Oh, I've heard that often enough the past few weeks. Yep. <laughs> At least Josh isn't complaining. No. That boy can spot an opportunity in everything. Oh, yeah. He's got a good head on his shoulders. Do you know, he's even loaned us one of his AFM wagons to mix the ration. It's a pity you ever got rid of your old one. Yeah, it is, really. Especially since he's insisted on a rent holiday in return. Oh, smart lad. <laughs> Too smart for me most of the time. Well, he's got to take care of his business, ain't he? Yeah, he does that all right. I don't know how much rent Ruth and I will ever actually see from him. <laughs> I don't blame him. These are hard times. Oh, we're all worrying about what's going to happen at the end of March. Yeah. Uh, we're having an update tomorrow night at the NFU, if you can make it. Oh, talking won't change much, will it? Money's tight for everyone at the moment. Which, um, I was going to ask you about. Sorry about the mix-up, Alistair. It doesn't matter. I'd forgotten Reg was off this afternoon. Well, we got to Cranny in the end. Is this the last of her annuals? Yep. She's right up to date, Elizabeth. Good. Um, who have you got exercising her now? Um, Freddie used to. Yes? Reg takes her out now and then. Uh-huh. And I, I believe Jessica's taking an interest when she can get away from the Hawks. Good girl. I suspect she could do with working harder. You don't want to see Cranford Crystal flabbing up, do we? Oh, uh, no. I might give Reg a call about it tomorrow. Yes, yes. Thanks, Alistair. Afternoon. Oh. Hi, Jolene. Oh, yeah. I forget I was coming over. Uh, no, no. I've left some leaflets and family day vouchers in the office for you. Yeah, I wanted to ask about the family days. Is this a bad time? 
Actually, I'm, I'm helping Alistair. Well, that's all right. I'm almost done. Uh, you see to Jolene. I'll finish up in here. Oh, oh, that's great. Thanks, Alistair. Yes, all right. Um, I'll come to the office with you. Oh, smashing. Uh, and since the sun's peeked out for the first time in ages, how's about we go the long way round? No, I'll, I'll take you, Paul. You know, if it isn't bad enough forking out for a new plate cooler and fixing the leak, we've just had a fertiliser bill. Oh. It does not make good reading. Oh, I know what it's like. Paying out with two hands, collecting with one. Yeah, plus Ben's getting more involved on the farm, so... You know. oh, I thought you'd probably say that. But I had to ask. Oh, yeah, yeah. And if I do hear of anyone else with casual work going, I'll pass your name on. Oh, ta, David. Well, the market's a lifeline. But boot sales and landscape in this time of year. Not much about. No. We still have to find the rent whatever the month. <sighs> of course. Never mind what happens when Edward and Emma move out and... Stop chipping in regular like. I really wish I had something to offer. Oh, it's all right, David. Maybe when we get to lambing. But, like I said, we've been knocked back by Bridge Farm's decision as well. Tony's serious about that. Well, he seems convinced they can sell a lot of organic beef as part of their revamped veg boxes, which means taking a lot less of our Hereford beef. They ain't got enough Angus's to cover all year round, have they? Well, he says they'll still take ours in their downtimes, but... It's going to be a big loss. Just what you need. (laughs) I hope Tony realises what an awful lot of hard work he's letting himself in for. Hungry enough, aren't they, Johnny? They were pretty suspicious of the ring feeder the first day or two. Yeah? Not for long, though. As soon as they see me bringing a bale now, they start mobbing up. They look a decent bunch. All right, Bess. You're out of college early. Private study? Yeah, yeah. Looks like you're studying hard, Ben. I wanted to give her a walk. Hey, Bess, lie down. Before it got dark. I was saying, I couldn't stand being in a classroom and I could be doing something useful. Any chance of a closer look at the Monty's? Not with Bess. They're not used to dogs. I meant you hold on to her, I'll go in. You've been near your own cows today? Yeah. Better not, then. OK. Besides, one or two still quite edgy. Sorry if that's what you came for. Not really. I'm training best to get used to different places, different animals. Mm. She's taking quite an interest in these. Don't burrow under the gate, Bess. Can you pull her back a bit? Bess? Hey, be- Bess, lie down. Good girl. The, the other thing was, what are you doing on Valentine's? Valentine's? Yeah. Well, I don't want to break your heart, mate, but I'm already spoken for. I meant you and Bella. You want to come to our Love Sucks party? You what? Me and Rory are fixing it up. Well, me mostly. He's back at school. In Littlefield? An outdoor Valentine's party. No, in an old caravan. She's sneaking forward again. Bess, lie down! We're decorating it in broken hearts, ripped up love letters, stuff like that. Nice. Love sucks, but the party's kicking. Uh, If you want to bring Bella, Uh, and maybe some of her friends, or any of your old mates from college, (laughs) girls, I mean. Yeah, I get the picture, Ben. You and Rory want some female company. (laughs) We're having a proper sound system. Plenty of booze. You up for it? Thanks for the invite, but... Uh, Go on. I think Bella's expecting something a bit classier on the night. Oh. Hey, quiet. Let's move away. Bess! She's seen something. Oh, don't let go! Bess! Come back! No, 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 no! Get her out! Oh, no! Ben! <sighs> Makes such a difference, doesn't it? Sun on your face. Even if it's only for a little while. I hadn't realised you wanted to go all the way to the ha. Oh, you don't mind, do you? Makes a real break from being stuck indoors. Aren't I keeping you from work? Oh, that's all right. Kenton will manage for a while. <laughs> oh, this is one of my favourite views in the whole of Lower Loxley. You get the sweep of the place, don't you? It's quite attractive, I suppose. Nah, he'll be fine. The Borsetshire philatelists are in for lunch, but he's got Wayne and Bella with him. Um, if, if we turn down here, we can get back to the office more quickly. Yeah. Whatever you like, Elizabeth. He should be OK with the stamp collectors. <laughs> as long as he don't start talking too much and saying something tactless. Well, he's Kenton, he's bound to. That's what my brother does sometimes. 
Sometimes. Oh. We had a bit of a run-in last week. Oh, right. I never mentioned it. What did he say to you? Thanks, Alistair. I was totally panicking. With good reason. She could still easily break her leg. I know. And with Grandad and Tom off the farm, I didn't know what else to do except ring you. Well, let's get a sedative in before we try freeing her. Easy. Uh, Easy. All right, well, let that take effect. I didn't think you'd get here so quick. I oh, pushed back a herd health check. This couldn't wait. No. How did she get her leg stuck? Something spooked Ben's dog. She saw a rat, ran off after it. Where have you left Bess? Tied up round the corner. I don't know how she pulled her lead free. Then she got into the Montes. This one freaked, tried jumping the gate and caught a leg in the bars. You're lucky she didn't break it straight away. I know. If she does, she'll have to be put down, won't she? I'm afraid so. My first week with him. Uh, we may still get her out. What can I do? I don't know, Ben. How about collecting Bess and going home? I, I want to do something. I feel so guilty. I'm really sorry, Johnny. It's not your fault. I shouldn't have let you get so close. I was stupid. I shouldn't have let go. Can we forget about blame? The less fuss here, the better. <sighs> yeah. OK. If she has another panic, I'm afraid we'll lose her. That was a very nice cup of tea. Pity you didn't make a pop. <laughs> Did you say it was a decaf one? Does that help? Jolene, I, I know what you want to do, and I suppose it's very good of you. Oh, I don't want to do anything hey, much. You're trying to cheer me up. I'm cheering myself up, dodging the stamp collectors. You're making me go for a walk, having tea together. But you don't need to. I'm all right. I'm just tired. One good night's sleep. <laughs> really good night, and I'll feel much better. I know I will. How's that going, then? Still not too good. The other advantage of me coming over is having a break from your brother. I love him to bits, but sometimes I wish it was easier to reach the off switch. <laughs> like you said, he can be very aggravating. <laughs> Charging in, saying what you should do. Telling you what's wrong with you. Oh, he thinks he knows everything, but he's no idea. No? He doesn't know how I feel when I wake up in the night. Uh, that's the problem, it Happens every night. It's the only reason I feel so low. There's nothing else wrong with me. Well, I have bad nights now and again. What wakes you up? Oh, uh, so many things. Yeah? I really do need to get on, if you don't mind. No, no, not at all. I need to see Trent in the orangery. Um, thank you for picking up the leaflets and vouchers. Yeah, it's been good. Having a chat? Mm. I mean, normally we don't get much time together. I've enjoyed it. How's about me coming over again soon? Oh, well, I, I don't know. I'm going to be busy for the next few weeks. Oh, no worries. If you're working when I call by, I can always go admire the ha-ha, can I? She's about as calm as she's going to get. What do we do? You stay there, Johnny. I'm going to try and work her leg free. You don't need any help? No, we'd only get in each other's way. It'll take some doing on your own. She's really wedged in. Well, let's see. That's uh. it. Go on. Yeah. Careful. Careful. Yeah. yeah, go on. That's it. Yeah. What happened? Is she okay, Alistair? Stay back a second. She's frightened and groggy. Did you feel anything? You hear anything snap? Hold on, hold on. She wants to get up. Come on, girl. We need to get her in the crush to take a proper look, but at first glance... She's not putting much weight on it, but she's moving. It's not broken, is it? Well, I want to make sure, but it looks like she's got away with bruising. You're amazing, Alistair. I don't know about that. You are. If I'd have lost her after all the trust Grandad's put in me, I, I can't think about it. Let's get you in the crush. Go on. It's just experience. No, it ain't. I wouldn't have had the strength to do what you did. Go on, girl. You're totally amazing, Alistair. Thanks. Ambridge would be lost without you. It's all very well asking me to consider the impact on Rory. What about the rest of the children? Have you done something with the keys, Jenny? No. 
We are the only stable point that Kate's ever had in her life. Ugh. And Alice might be supporting you at the moment. <laughs> She'll be devastated if the family breaks up. Well, I'm not the one threatening to make that happen. You're giving me no choice, Brian. I've said everything I've got to say on the subject. I can't explain it any more clearly. Well, I wish you'd try. You haven't made any sense at all so far. I can't find my car keys. They're next to the microwave, where you dumped them when you came in. Well, why... Excuse me. Where are you going now? Out. Out where? Out of your way. You finished too, Kirsty? Oh, hi, Ian. Yeah. End of shift couldn't come fast enough. I need peace and quiet to do some thinking. You and me both. I haven't seen much of you in the staff room this week. No, nah, I've been giving it a miss since dropping the baby bomb. Oh, it's a shame you had to go public so soon. Yeah, too right. It hasn't felt very comfortable in there. Well, lots of us are really hoping it goes well for you. Well, judging from some comments, there's plenty who aren't impressed about the prospect of two men having a baby. Oh, don't take any notice. Yeah, I try not to, but Katarina and Jenny have got it down to a fine art. What? Yeah, lowering their voices just enough to make sure I can still hear every word. Oh. I'll see ya. It's very good of you, Doug. Not at all. Well, go on, sit down. Oh. It won't be a second. Thanks. I didn't want to do this over the phone. No need to explain, Alistair. I can see where you're coming from. I know it's short notice to squeeze in a meeting. Well, I thought if it's important enough for you to come all the way over from Ambridge, the least I can do is find you a few minutes. Oh, thanks. Though, as you can imagine, with everything we've got on at Level James, it's going to have to be a very few. I can't invite you in, I'm afraid. That don't matter, Jennifer. I am. I'm rather busy. Yeah, I can see that. Oh, oh dear, I forgot. Excuse me, Emma. No, you don't want blood dripping all over your doorstep, do you? Oh, I'm uh, I'm making a, a game pie. Lucky Brian. For Alice and your brother. It's about the next parish council meeting. I'm, I'm just surprised there's nothing on the village website yet. Oh, Okay. You normally get the date and agenda up in good time. And I, I did send you an email. Well, we've had some problems connecting to the internet. Huh? Well, temporary problems. I'll, I'll try and see to it later. You should have told me you were having trouble. I'd have done it for you. Well, I'm perfectly capable, Emma. I've, I've just had other priorities lately. I'm sure. Mm? You must have. Is it true what everyone's saying about Lexi? Oh, hey. Oh, afternoon, Ian. You looking for Adam? Yeah, uh, I'm taking him up to go on the town. Well, he's running late, I'm afraid. There's a problem with the deer fencing. I needn't have been in such a rush. Want a coffee? It's uh, only Ian's son. No, no, no. It's fine, thanks. I haven't the patience to fire up his coffee maker. It's too damn fiddly. Ah, uh, it's not that bad once you get the hang. Oh, it's the one you bought him. Yeah, he wasn't going to make the office more comfortable himself. Uh. Uh, do we know how long he'll be? Well, it depends how big the problem is. Right. Give him a ring. No, no, not if he's busy. I'll just wait. I brought him some heat bulbs. OK. And I need his signature on a couple of things. Not for the hearing next week? No. Oh, um... No, farm admin. Oh, right. Yeah, I was going to say... He's feeling the fallout from that. Huh, he is. So, you know... Do you want to leave the documents and get off home? I'll make sure he signs them. Well, I may as well wait. Now I've made a coffee. What Not are you as going bad to as the forecaster? Sorry, after you, Brian. Are you and Adam going shopping in town? You're looking for a cot or something? Oh, he's collecting his car after its service. Oh, yeah. And we're not rushing to buy anything for the baby. No. Don't want to tempt fate. Very wise. Though, I'm finding it hard to think of anything else. Especially after hearing what some people are saying about the pregnancy. No, I like Lexi. We get on really well at the chicken factory. That's why I've been sticking up for her. Against what? The rumours. It's all over the village, Jennifer. Well, what is? People don't understand why she's doing it. They've never heard of compassion. 
of doing something for a friend out of out of kindness. Now, not carrying a baby for nine months and then giving it up. It's not her baby. Well, that's what she says now. How's she going to feel after it's born, when it's lying in her arms? I'm pretty sure Lexi knows what she's doing, Emma. Uh, I hope so, Kirsty. Afternoon. Good afternoon. If it were my baby, I wouldn't want to give it away. How often do I have to say, Emma, it isn't her baby? Well, not biologically. It isn't her egg. She's simply carrying it for Ian and Adam. If I ever gave birth to another one, I know I'd think of it as mine, no matter where it came from. That's why you're not a surrogate. Most women would feel the same, wouldn't they, Kirsty? Well, I can't speak for other women. Alexi well, obviously doesn't feel that way. No, unless she reckons she ain't got a choice. And what do you mean by that? People are saying it must be because she's short of money or something. How dare you! <laughs> Emma, has Lexi told you she's doing this against her will? No, I haven't actually spoken to her about it yet. Oh, well, that's obvious. Well, if you've no reason to believe she's been pushed into this, which she hasn't... Wouldn't it be better if you kept your opinions to yourself? Here, yeah, here. Yeah. They're not my opinions. I thought you'd want to know what everyone's saying. Oh, how thoughtful of you. Uh, it's not my fault if you've taken it the wrong way. Uh, if that's all you came for, Emma. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't worry about looking after the website or nothing, Jennifer. You get back to your game pie. Oh. Are you all right? Yes, I'm perfectly all right, thank you. That was a, a very timely intervention. Uh, I was coming round anyway. Can you believe how mean-spirited some people are? Oh, yes. I've been on the receiving end often enough. And you'd think a baby'd be a cause for celebration. Well, perhaps Emma thought she really was doing you a favour, letting you know the gossip. I'd far rather not know. The baby was the one bright spot that I... Oh, well, no, no. You, you needn't be concerned with my troubles. No. Though I do have one piece of good news for you. Oh? The bloke's been. The phone and broadband's working again. Oh. Oh, I suppose that's something. Yeah, well, I thought you'd like to know. Kirsty. Hmm? Thank you. So, having an equine specialist alongside me, absolutely, a, a real priority... Let's make maximum use of the knockdown room and the rest of the recent upgrades. But there's room to expand on the farming side as well. From Ambridge? Why not run a farmer's discussion group out of the stable surgery? I'm sure there'll be plenty of interest in the area, without expecting them to trek all the way to Felpersham. Hmm. Well, there's no reason we can't have two groups. I'd be more than happy to run the Ambridge one. Even something as basic as a workshop on hoof trimming. You'd be amazed how badly it's done on some farms I go to. <laughs> I wouldn't be. <laughs> There's some stockmen I wouldn't trust to cut their own toenails. Oh, yeah, if it's only meeting every two or three months, I can easily fit that in. Uh, but not the Felpisham group. I'd much prefer staying Ambridge-based, continuing with my existing workload. Hmm. If you're worried about my age, that I'd be a liability... Don't be daft. I'm in better shape physically than I've been for years... In fact, I've brought something to show you. All right. Um, I'm looking at a pantomime horse, Alistair. A pantomime horse who's just completed a half marathon? Oh. Well, that is quite impressive. Uh, but we did see you as potentially working with students here. That's something Don's very keen on. Oh, I've mentored before, and I'd happily mentor again. Any student on placement can come out with me on my rounds. That's one possibility. But if Lovell James want the best out of me, Doug, you're better leaving me in my own practice working on farm, not stuck half the week in a training room or office. Right. Is that you done? I, um, I, th I think that's everything. Only I wondered if you were going to finish with a song and shuffle off to Buffalo. <sighs> Sorry, have I uh, gone on a bit? You're telling us you want to carry on in Ambridge doing what you're doing, only more so. Uh, that's not a bad way to put it. I can see some merit in that, Alistair. But Don and I need to talk, you know, before we can come to any decision on what to do with our new pantomime horse. Now, obviously, Adam and I have talked about it plenty of times. But even in the 21st century, there's going to be a reaction from some Neanderthals. Well, two men having a baby still isn't all that usual in Bosage, yeah? We know we'll have to help our son or daughter deal with it. But the way Jenny and Katerina were going on, how selfish we're being. Virtually setting our child up to get name-called and bullied from day one in nursery. That's what rattled me. Yeah, but I hate to say this, but they may have a point, Ian. 
Children can be very cruel. Not if they're brought up in the right way. Well, I remember my own school days. Away from adult eyes, we could be hurried to each other. But there are always some nasty so-and-so's in the class. Yeah, this was all mass. The tiniest difference, any hint of weakness, set the whole back on you. Yeah, at an all-boys board in school, that's different. Well, just don't kid yourself girls are any nicer. Not once mob rule takes over. Most kids in most ordinary schools aren't like that. How do you know? Oh, I'm not so sure. I mean, you must have seen your fair share of scraps growing up in Northern Ireland. Mm, definitely. No, but things are better now, aren't they? Teachers know how to look for it. Mm. Well, they aren't around when children are on their phones. Uh, I guess not. People can be so vicious online. They torment you in your own home. Yeah, I know, that's awful. We're always finding new ways to be cruel. That's why I drummed into Rory early on. If you can talk your way out of trouble, good for you. Sometimes that isn't enough. Well, was he ever bullied? Well, what do you think? An unusual family background, to say the least. He never made much of it, but I'm sure he had a few tricky moments. What did you do about it? I told him to stick up for himself. By fighting? As a last resort, yes. Sometimes it's far better to show some spirit than just cave oh, in. Oh, come on. Well, believe me. You'll feel the same when you have a child of your own. I hope not. Well, what's the alternative? Let yourself be pushed around forever? Because that's what happens if you give in, Ian. Are you saying me and Adam have to bring up our child a prize fighter? No, of course not. But it's the same for everyone. Sometimes you have to make a stand. That's what I've always tried to show Rory. When you've been pushed around and picked on... And sometimes it's time to clench your fists and stand your ground, whatever the odds. Even if you go down fighting in a lost cause. You want me to lace them up for you, No, there's no need, love. I don't mind. Yeah, you get on tidying the pot so I can still manage. So it... I ain't so quick getting me boots on these days. Well, and then Kirsty butts in and more or less tells me it's none of my business. Well, what's I going to do with her? Uh, I nearly said that. Well, at least she weren't shrieking like a mad woman. Oh, Jennifer Audrey should know better. Yeah. And she came to the door with a huge, great knife dripping with blood. Oh, no. She hadn't done a hell in archer, has she? Eh? She was making a game pie. Oh, as long as she hadn't chopped her husband into it. Oh. Eh? <laughs> I was only warning her about what she's going to hear anyway. Yeah, well, that's what happens when the good Lord humbles the mighty. It fills him with rage. Well, she had plenty of that, all right. Uh, pride goes before destruction and haughty spirit before a fall. Uh, <laughs> Perhaps you can give him a tighten, Emma. Oh, yeah. The notch is a little awkward to do. It's not too soon to be taking Gemma. Oh, she ain't pulling the trap. I'm only walking her part ways along the M where it won't hurt her hoof. What, uh, testing her? Ah. Uh, How's that? Uh, oh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Alistair Lloyd was very pleased when he changed the poultice, so she's healing up well. Good. And she's missed not getting out. Hey, hold still. Um, Will that do? Yeah. Oh, oh just right. Yeah. Uh, when are you off to Waterley Cross? I end you at the chicken factory till 12. Oh, well, you have a proper sit down and a cup of tea before then. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah, you haven't stopped all morning. I've promised myself half an hour with my design scrapbook. Oh, oh no, no. I have a nice surprise for you about that. Oh, what are you doing? I'm trying not to knock you over. Oh, you nearly gave me a heart attack. You should look where you're going on that thing, Kirsty. Oh, charming. When did this happen, Joe? Ah, well, Eddie brought the magazines home yesterday while you were still working. He actually paid for it. Though. Oh, no, 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 no. He found them in a skip. That's why some of the pictures is a touch wrinkle, you see. Yes, I'd, I'd noticed. Yeah. Well, they don't print borsets or interiors no more. I wonder why. Oh, no, this is a real gold mine. Some of the copies go back to the 1980s. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the 19th century. Oh, no, it's bang up to date, some of it. The company didn't go bust till 2002. And who cut all the pictures out and stuck them in? Oh, Akira did the first two. Knew you got upset with your last scrapbook, poor little mate. Oh, bless her. And what about the rest? Ah, well, no, Clary said 
we should stop there and let you decide if the magazines is any good or not, you see. Aww. This was going to be my global nomad section. Only uh, I woke up in the night for a tinkle and I couldn't get back off, so I did a few more for you. <laughs> yeah, very soothing. Cutting and gluing. Must have been out of half the night. Oh, don't you worry about that. I, <laughs> I like to thinking about how nice your new home will be, how happy you and Edward will be there. It was a very kind thought, Joe. You, you, you don't like it? Some of the wallpaper and the furnishings are quite interesting. Not to your taste. We want our home to feel totally contemporary. Your global gonad style. Nomad. So... This is no use to you. Not really, Joe. Oh, I, <coughs> I'm an interfering old fool. No. I should have done what Clary said. Leave it all to you and Edward. It was a lovely idea. Only you needn't worry in the future. You mad at me for spoiling your new scrapbook? Of course eh? I ain't, Joe. I'm not one of them thin-skinned, bad-tempered Aldridges, am I? Are they worth dragging you over to see, Kirsty? I like the colours. <laughs> Everyone says that. Well, they're very striking with the white heads and red and white bodies. Yep, typical Monty's. If I say I'm really impressed, can we go to the tea room, Helen? Sure. <laughs> That's my real reason for coming over, not the cows. Philistine. <laughs> Though Ian wasn't very impressed either. <laughs> you forced him to look at them. Oh, he called in last night. Oh, he was in a real state. Why? He'd been talking to Brian about the baby. Oh, you try to convince him that the child will spend its whole life being picked on for having gay parents. That's oh, nonsense. No. So wound up, though. Oh, that's ridiculous. Kids come from all sorts of mix and match families, don't they? Yeah, so they take them to the afternoon pickup at Loxley Barrett sometime. Oh, yeah, you should do. I've got the whole range there. It's not remotely like in Brian's day. Oh, he's got a real gift for winding people up. Uh, I nearly flattened him on my way here. Why? Did he say something stupid? I mean, I literally nearly flattened him. He walked straight in front of me. I didn't see you. He was in a world of his own. Huh? I only just missed him. Well done. And I suppose I might have been a bit preoccupied myself. Why? Hmm. I've got a really big decision to make. Ah, Joe? What's the matter? Did your pony pulled up? Oh, no, no, no. Jim's in no trouble. It's me ankle. Well, what have you done to it? I took a bad step off a tussock and, it, and it's a bit sore. Oh, I see. Wouldn't have happened if there was more giving me boots. They've been fastened rather tight. Oh, well, I mean, is there anything I can do? Oh, no, 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 no. No need to disturb you. Oh, well, if you insist. Oh, uh, no, well, it's your offering. Uh, maybe you could hold on to Jim for me for a minute. Oh. Uh, he's easy enough. And she go, eh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, all right. Oh, uh, let her see you properly first, so she ain't frightened. Yeah. Uh, oh, that's if you ain't too busy. Oh, no, no, no. No, I wasn't doing anything very much. I'm just walking and thinking. You had no idea? None whatsoever. Well, you must have been getting serious for him to ask. Well, yeah, I suppose... But you're not ready to move in with him? Oh, I honestly don't know, Helen. What did you say? I asked him to let me mull it over. He's fine with that. So, what's stopping you deciding? Well, except the thought of us being neighbours. <laughs> Near enough. Oh, that's ironic, isn't it? <laughs> Philip buying one of the houses on Beechwood that I was dead set against. Mm, I've got to admit, they do look very smart. <laughs> well, if my conscience can get used to it, be a real step up from Willow Farm... But what really matters is whether living together would work. Mm. I don't want to risk another big relationship going wrong. Do you think it would? <sighs> do you love him? Yes, I think I do. And you like being with him? Well, definitely. I mean, he's such good company. He's so easy to be with. It's important. We disagree on loads of things, but he never tries to put me down. Like I told him I'd love to work in the environmental sector. He's all for it. It's good. Says he'll offer whatever support I need. So is it... He's just not the right guy? He 
He could well be Helen. But we were jogging along so nicely, it, it really suited me. Now I've got to make big decisions. Oh, it's frightening. I guess there are risks with any relationship. Yeah, but if it's a good one, it makes you feel alive and special again, doesn't it? Oh, you've got a glow on all of a sudden. Have we stopped talking about Philip? No, no, not at all. Is this to do with Monday, Mr Wen's kitchen? Well, maybe. Was it just you and Lee? Yeah. Right. How did it go? Very well, actually. OK. Well, like Philip, Lee's really easy to get on with. He wasn't pushy or anything? Not at all. He's so genuine and doesn't pretend to be anything he's not. Accepts me for who I am. Which is a change from last time. Oh, have you said anything about Rob yet? No. Nothing at all? Of course not. We've only been out twice. But you're seeing him again? Well, I hope so, yeah. Well, shouldn't you give him some idea of what's happened? Not yet. Well, you can't leave it too but long. When I'm ready to tell him... Unless he hears from someone else first. You know what's happened with Lexi. Not stupid, Kirsty. If we carry on seeing each other, I'm going to choose the right moment. What if Susan or someone tells my him? My life, my decision. I'm only concerned about you getting hurt. Well, thanks very much, Kirsty, but you needn't bother. Lee is the best thing to happen to me in a very long time. Do you really have to put a down on it quite so quickly? Whoa, stay still, Jim. A uh, few more minutes resting. I'll be fine to carry on. <laughs> Are you still with you, girl? <laughs> and you're quite wrong, Brian Aldrich. Well, you're not pleased to see what's happened to us. Oh, I've suffered too much in my own life to exalt anybody else's downfall. Oh. <laughs> you and your missus being driven out of your home ain't no different to my family being forced to live in Meadow Rice. Well. Oh, terrible place that was. We knew we'd fallen as low as it's possible to fall then, same as you now. Yeah, yeah we haven't quite lost everything. Yes, yeah, your missus I feel most sorry for. I remember what she did for us after poor Nick passed on. A lot of folk didn't know what to do or say. Well, she did, yeah. She comes straight round with a shepherd's pie and a few kind words. <laughs> she knew we was in no state to look after ourselves. Yeah, well, Jenny's very good that way. Well, I didn't see her kindness for what it was. I was too torn up inside. Blaming myself for Nick getting sepsis. Yeah, still do sometimes. Oh, come on, it wasn't your fault, Joe. These awful things just, uh, just well, happen. I was bubbling over with anger and guilt. Didn't think there was any way out of it. Silly old fool that I was. All, all I wanted to do was to lash out. Oh, yes. And take on the old world. You do, don't you? And no matter how futile that is. Uh, How's your ankle now? Uh, yeah, get in there. You know what pulled me back from all that reach? No. Seeing the harm and worry I was causing the rest of the family. They was grieving the exact same loss. What was my feelings worth next to theirs? Poor Williams most of all. Thank the Lord I had enough sense to see it before he made a very dark situation any worse. Yeah, that's the lesson I pulled out of it, Brian Aldridge. When everybody's suffering, don't waste time fighting your own selfish battles. Look round and ask, what's the right thing to do for the folk you love most? 